Oh, I didn't see you there. Come join me, won't you? Thank you. How you doing, everybody? Me with another video. Uh, I got a few updates. Uh, aside from my niece bringing me an amazing fan mail card, thank you very much, Victoria, for the amazing card. And thank you very much, Mom, too. Cornell, which is the goat that you see at the introductory part of this video, uh, before the um, snow fell for this winter here, uh, he has not been doing particularly well, and I'm not exactly sure why. He has his food, he has his water, uh, he's pooping, I haven't seen him pee in a while, uh, I've seen him walk, but he likes to hide like a troll under the stairs. I think he doesn't know that he's a goat. Hey Cornell, you've been screaming your head off outside. You got your sugar water, you got your bowl of oats, we're taking you to the vet tomorrow, so you get your rest tonight. Cornell's sister is fine. Gracie, she's a personality. Uh, I, she, she wants YouTube time. That's what she wants. Uh, but Cornell, who is named after the late great Chris Cornell, has not been feeling like himself. So I gotta take him to the vet tomorrow. Cornell, by the way, comes from the root cornus, which means horns. And speaking of broken things, guess what happened to my strat today? The wire came loose. And normally I would solder this thing back together again, but ever since I moved out here to rural Alberta, I don't have a soldering iron. So guess what I'm going to be purchasing tomorrow, too? Uh, a little disappointed because this was uh, fixed up and set up and everything about a year ago. So I must have been doing a lot of twisting and turning with the cords and picking this up and putting it down. And I've noticed every single time I pick it up and put it down, uh, it twists and the uh, cord goes round and round and round so I suspect that this must eventually have uh, also just broken and snapped off I've cleaned it up and it's ready for soldering but in the meantime I have other guitars to play so that's what I'm going to be using today uh, a last change is I've got the microphone over here uh, because when I'm playing um, having a microphone right here in my face is good, but when I'm trying to write and practice and do my notation, it gets in the way. Now, of course, I realize when I'm doing my video, it's in the way of the beautiful fire. So I hope you don't mind. It's going to stay here. And uh, I hope you can hear me too, because this thing has got a microphone. So with things not exactly working the way you're supposed to and you can't get sound out of them and having to rearrange things so you can produce sound kind of inspired me to do a video about the PA system or public address system. Feedback, 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 feedback. There it is. A PA system or public address system is something that every musician really ought to know how it works because when you're on a stage and you gotta make sound from the big speakers you got your gear which is all nice and well but if the people in the back can't really hear your groove then mm. or worse yet uh, you go from pub to pub to pub and you are trying to get your name out there and as it turns out they don't have a PA system then you gotta invent something pretty fast. Okay, I started with a PA system uh, originally was garage sailing. Uh, my friends and I on Saturday mornings, if we could get up that early because we were teenagers, uh, would go cruising and we would pick up stereo uh, systems and speakers. Now, ha, this was the 90s and uh, a lot of old folks were kind of getting rid of their old stuff so we had uh, stereo receivers so they were able to pick up AM and FM radio and they were also able to have RCA inputs for tapes they would amplify all those sounds and if you connected speakers then uh, you would be able to then have sound and I figured out through trial and error a lot of trial and error <laughs> how to hook up an electric guitar a lot of trial and error um, 
with screwdrivers in the back there and stripped wires finding out uh, which two leads are the ones that you needed in order to be able to actually create sound. My dad had a stereo receiver. That was good practice. He also had uh, really crappy speakers and they were good for the kind of the music and sound that he wanted to produce but when you crank something through that then you tend to have a few accidents. I didn't quite like the sound of a of a broken speaker going every single time you're trying to play. Yeah. So that was my very first PA system in my dad's basement. Also in the 90s, uh, when I was working in retail, there was a store, a couple of stores down. It was a thrift shop, and there I was able to pick up speakers and stereo receivers and wiring cables a record player uh tape players and put that together that was really appreciated by all the customers because there was a microphone when i was calling out orders and i was able to sing or conversely when i was in the back i was singing and uh it was the radio a q107 classic rock or 102.9 the edge um picked up cds and records and CD players hooked that all up together and we had a rotation going we had burnt discs and everything and oh it was so much fun lots of fun actually come to think of it I remember in my Dodge minivan I had a Dodge caravan um, 1990 or 91 really old uh, and we had that a converting device where uh, if you had a CD player and an output uh, left and right you can put it in as a cassette tape stick it in and get that CD player to work through your speaker system in a car that's a PA system and driving that into your car stereo you can then have a public address system and it's portable on wheels and you can go anywhere you want and uh, we eventually did do that but but it kind of defeats the point uh, because if you have um, uh, equipment that can produce sound, you don't need to pipe it through a car stereo system then, do you? Unless you have the hatchback and you're pumping it. Now that was something I've always wanted to try. Um, going to a remote location, um, in a, like a parking lot for example, uh, outside the skirts of the city and uh, really crank it with portable audio equipment. The trick with that though is that you still need your electric guitars uh, with your buddies uh, in the back there uh, to be rocking out but you need a, a preamp, you need an amplifier, uh, something with its own power system that can drive that and that way you can just blast um, all into the open night. And that was never possible because uh, I realized that I needed a lot of juice and if anything I would have to plug into an outside port. Um, now with electric cars you might be able to do that. We'll see. In fact, I've got a hybrid vehicle right now. As an experiment, I'm going to give that a try. I'm going to do that by a lakeside. It's only sound energy too, so I don't think it's going to have to take much of a charge to be able to make a loud, loud noise. DJs have this difficulty because they need to set up outdoors sometimes or in a warehouse. Hell, if I just had like a, a small amplifier that runs on batteries because they, they exist these days, um, and have a microphone, uh, I would be able to just busk. That's always fun. Come to think of it, with busking, which I have done, uh, I always had a power source and an extension cord. Like, things that you normally wouldn't con kind of consider uh, because you're just in your own little realm with your amplifier, your instrument, and your groove. When you have to put together a stage, there's like a whole mess of problems and a whole, like, toolbox that you need, um, which I carried around. and. Yeah, oh gosh, my red toolbox. That brings back memories. I don't have a toolbox now. I keep things on shelves, but I obviously have, you know, important things that I need to be able to, you know, work with things in case I need to, you know, put things together or take things apart, um, put wires together. Soldered my own wires before. 
Um, I've got a whole mess of batteries. I've got uh, more connectors. I've got um, oh geez, I even have a sound meter. I had a volt meter, ammeter at one point, but uh, that's gone. And I never found out where the hell it went. This is the weirdest thing. Probably stolen. Um, hmm. You learn a lot of skills, that's for sure. And carry on a lot of adapters. Oh, geez, the adapters I've got. Holy crap. From like RCA to XLR, XLR to quarter inch or quarter inch to one eighth inch jacks. Um, uh, singles, doubles, triples. Power cables. Once I had a gig um, with my buddy Tom and we call ourselves smoke and mirrors we were playing in a pub and we had everything but he didn't have his cord for his amplifier we're like oh ah, dude so he ran out canadian tire boom the audience doesn't know the audience doesn't care how it's put together they they are primarily visual and and uh auditory they just want to see things rock out and they want it fucking really good um and you just can't do that when your equipment is crapping out when it's all crackly feedback feedback there it is the drummer is usually laughing because he's got all his gear and he has, you know, his realm. Boom. And uh, he plays loud enough where you really don't need a PA system. Uh, unless it's a really big crowd or you're somewhere outside and you really should get some uh, mics on that. So all those times where my band The Thirst would uh, get together. Drummer, boom, got his stuff there. Guitarist, uh, amplifier, get things set up, get the sound right, uh, bring levels up to the drummer because he's the loudest. And then me, the singer and the bassist have to set up that and this and the mics and the stands, uh, making sure things don't feed back, uh, doing level checks and getting someone on the back, making sure they can hear me. Uh, just, oh, so much fussing, but also so much fun. Because with that, you also have a lot of control over the kind of things that you need to do, like sound. Um, you learn different effects. You learn how to uh, approach microphones. Uh, you learn how to project if things don't necessarily work. You've got contingency plans if things fail. Um, plan B's, plan C's. Uh, you have enough equipment to do on-the-spot fixes, and it works, and you just keep on rocking. And I've worked with enough public address systems to know that uh, it's good to have spare stuff around in case I need to bring things in if theirs is terrible or how to hook into theirs. Uh, if theirs is all dusty and crusty, how to make it work. And uh, you start to experiment too. Um, with my looper station here, it's got audio outs, a couple of them, A and B. And so what I did was use these little 9 volt battery operated amplifiers. Fun! What I did is uh, had a couple of them uh, that I would set up with my electric guitar down at the beaches at Lake Ontario in Toronto and people would be walking by as I'm grooving out doing loops and stacking tracks. I had it all inside a bag maybe about this big with a, um, a strap. Um, I took my electric guitar and I would plunk around on the bus until I got to the location, jam away for a few hours and then come back home. It was a lot of fun, a lot of exercise and a lot of performance. Of course, the sound quality is not the best coming out of these little 9 volts, you know, suckers. Um, and they're mono, um, but you do have a little bit of control, and as long as you don't need to make too big of a noise, you get some decent tones. Back in 2017, I went to Prince Albert, and um, when I was staying in a residence, I had my Traveler guitar with me, I had one of these, I had my loop station, all run on batteries. Um, and uh, I created a lot of stuff and had it all recorded on my iPhone. I still have that stuff on my iPhone and I reference it even to these days. Um, a lot of good ideas. It's like a, a, a portable recording machine. Um, really, really helpful for ideas, keeping them and using them later. Also used uh, hybrid uh, PA systems, for example. Um, this one... If you, well, I'll turn it so you guys can see. I have my drums set up to a different PA system. I've got also this and my guitar is going through a different. That way, when I'm playing drums, I don't have, a, have to muck around with any of these sounds or settings. And uh, vice versa, if I'm singing and whatnot, I'm not messing around with the drum uh, PA system at all. So um, it's separate. 
Uh, if a drummer uh, visits, then they can change that system and remain independent. I can do whatever I need over here, and um, it's just a, a lot more control over the sound that you're producing yourself. Here, let me show you. Over there is the drum kit, and I've got a Behringer right there in the corner. That's uh, hooked up, and that's got its own sound supply. And then over there are the PVs, the SP5Gs that I got from Nolan, thank you very much. And they do most of the heavy lifting, um, there, that is where the sound comes out of. For microphones, for guitars, everything's hooked up through there. And if necessary, I even have another amplifier that I don't have hooked up because I don't really need it. And I have even another powered monitor that I got on sale from Long and McQuaid. I could use that as a PA. For example, if I want to go to a pub and play there, uh, a small intimate location, something smaller, uh, a venue maybe about this size or so, um, then I don't need something that huge. So I'll bring that and it'll be fine. I've never used that particular powered monitor. It's a wedge that would sit right in front of me. Um, I've tinkered with it and it's great to have uh, but if I play a small instrument interactive environment I think it would be perfect. If I really want to be technical and have complete control uh, I would have that one in front of me playing uh, everyone else would be able to hear but I would have also one in behind me that would project out and that would probably be separate completely like with a microphone. Feedback. There it is. Guitar stands, music stand, lights, maybe a couple of lights, maybe even these O-ring lights that I've got. Everything's portable. Like, I've really learned how to uh, move a stage around, and a uh, public address system is one of those important elements. Now, uh, I used to be uh, the Amateur Ryerson Theatre Society's technical director, and I had access to a lot of their equipment. So I've also played with lights and stands and putting a stage together, uh, talking to a carpenter and getting some basic, you know, knockdown furniture together, talking to uh, one of their um, shop department uh, prop makers and getting props and such, uh, having access to uh, the, the actual theatre um, uh, studies program and using their props as well. But that's already starting to get a little off topic because that has to do with uh, uh, theater design uh, and that's all based on the performance you have. Uh, as a musician, if someone like me wants to come out and rock out uh, a small, medium or large venue, I need a public address system. And uh, a stage itself would be kind of secondary. Um, I've played on floors, I've played on stages, I've traveled, I've played on large stages, I've played on permanent stages, I've played on not permanent stages, but you always need a PA system. Um, you may have noticed that there's also this Roland microcube that I've been using as well. I'm actually using this baby as just a preamp. Uh, it's got some sound effects and everything built in, but I don't really need it for that. I need it for its amp sims that are built in because uh, it's got several settings in there and I'm playing several different instruments and um, the instruments have their own particular character and capacity but I can color it very well with this amplifier. This amplifier also is quite small. Uh, a foot by a foot by six inches and uh, yeah, uh, stick it in a suitcase, take it around. Uh, I think I bought this one in uh, a brown sugar in the Tom St. Thomas. Yeah, I was traveling, and I, that's where I got my travel guitar. I got this amplifier at the same time. Um, it's helped me out. And uh, it's battery powered, so I can take it to a park. I've seen that, actually. Some people having battery-operated amplifiers and uh, just jamming out in a park. So cool. So cool. Um, yeah, I always uh, am impressed how people manage to rig things together. You know, very creative. Even if it's really simple, like this. I've rollerbladed playing bass guitar with this thing. Um, now, a bass guitar through a tiny cone like this sounds horrible. But if you yourself have got headphones, eh, here you go. These headphones are also a system for making sound, but it's not public address because no one else can hear them. Um, these I got online recently, and it's got a curly cord because I like curly cords. A lot of character. Something that I'd really like to try is. Uh, doing something like this. Um, this is all Bluetooth and so if I can create a Bluetooth signal uh, a lot of people with the same headband 
would be able to get addressed publicly and they can all groove out. It would be very strange watching them because uh, no one would be hearing the music that they're grooving out to. So, <laughs> it's possible this day and age. Uh, that would be pretty interesting to see. It's got a speaker right in here. I bought these for jogging, but I'm not going to run with my guitars. Uh, you learn a lot about sound engineering when you have to put together your own PA system, whether it's at home or at a pub or at a jam space where you, th you are the engineer. You can also pick up tips and tricks from magazines uh, as well as actual sound engineers. Uh, they typically know what they're doing. And uh, yeah, uh, once things are set up, don't touch them. Despite all my amazing experiences, I'm still on the amateur side, I believe, because I still don't have really good habits, like I don't label how things are. Um, I should have everything designed beautifully and perfectly, but I'm still rediscovering things, settings, like um, doing schematic diagrams in my music logbook is something that has become pretty normal for me. Uh, sometimes it, I overcomplicate and I come up with a simple thing. For example, I've got this red and green wire here, which are uh, something that I picked up at a, uh, geez, for like two thirty nine each. I think the uh, price tag is still on one of them. And uh, I, were, I wasn't using those. I was actually using long bass wires. And as it turns out, I didn't need to. So, duh different instruments with different settings and different configurations some things can get looped in with pedals other things don't need to um, remembering where the auxiliary sends or sending things having things labeled uh, color-coded sometimes even any color you like and a lot of the times it's all trial and error figuring out what's appropriate what's not appropriate um, Everyone's got their own particular system and way of doing things too, depending on all their components and their habits and what they like. It's always kind of fun as a musician meeting another musician and we talk not about music, what we like, or styles or performance, but we talk about the tech. <laughs> I'm, I'm uh, quite techy when it comes to this sort of thing. I've learned a lot. I always do appreciate when I meet another musician who is also a techie and he knows or she knows what they're doing, how to put it together, how to run the levels, um, how to fix things, how to dive in and solve a problem so that the person who's making all the noise can actually focus on just making that noise. Uh, make things so much simpler. Um, yeah, yeah. So that's like a, a Wizard of Oz behind the curtain kind of uh, knowledge about being in the tech side, doing the tech side of that sound engineering uh, to make things possible for rock and roll. And it all started with me downstairs using a 9 volt battery and licking it and making sure that it's powerful enough so that I can take a, a, a speaker wire and seeing which end was positive and which end was minus so that I can correctly hook it up to a stereo amplifier. Let's see the fires died down again. All right, well, uh, I think this is going to be a short one. Um, I've been working so much. Uh, I'm Hopefully I can get this one done in time for Friday. And we are approaching rapidly towards the end of season number one. I've got a lot of ideas for season number two, so uh, I'm going to be posting a few of these things on YouTube to see what the feedback is. If you want to say hello, then say hello online. Also, if you have a, a good story, uh, if you want to relive uh, some of your past or if you have like a aha moment back in the day that you want to share then why not also include that and type it in and tell me some of your stories. Feedback, 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 feedback. There it is.